Hi everyone, I'm Laura Stewart Atchison, strategist, founder of Wisdom Learned, and author of the number one international best-selling book, What Would a Wise Woman Do? And today I am so pleased to introduce you to my friend, Tom Antion. Tom is an author, but I have to tell you, he doesn't just give book reports. He is going to give us today immediately usable techniques that can take our book business to un- believable levels. I know everyone listening in on this call has a book that they've either written or want to get out, but they don't know how to take it to the next level. So using real world techniques, you're going to hear today from Tom how to become a multimillionaire only four short years after he started to sell his knowledge online. 17 books later, along with hundreds of spin-off information products, a professional speaking career, a mentor program, membership sites, some of which I have to tell you are quite funny, consumer advocate sites and sites about topics he doesn't even like, but he's still going strong. He says, I love selling electrons for fun and profit. And for those of you who know me, you know I'm a geek, or as I like to call it, an intellectual badass. So you can imagine how much fun I have when I talk to Tom. Tom is the founder of the Great Internet Marketing Retreat Center. You can find out more information at Great internetmarketingtraining.com and people come from all over the world to study internet marketing and the lap of luxury and he's the only licensed dedicated internet marketing school in the world and you can find out more about that at imtcva.org or you can click on the links below this video after you've had a chance to watch it to find out more about Tom. So Tom, welcome! Hey Laura, how are you? I'm great. I always have so much fun chatting with well, you. Well, I'm a little worried about you, to tell you the truth. Uh, I was uh, looking in some of the paperwork to get ready for this call, and I'm concerned about your next book. It's um, It says, Selling Your Baby. Isn't that illegal? I I, I didn't even know you were pregnant. Well, how did you <laughs> book? I mean... <laughs> It's such a tease. Actually, it's about selling your business as an entrepreneur. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that's different because I was just worried that you were going to get hauled off to jail in the middle of this interview. No, I think we'll wait, you know, at least nine months. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I was taking. So I was trying to decide if I should put the whole title of the next book out. You know, telling your baby seven questions to ask before you sell your company, or just tease people with it. And I, I'm getting a lot more expressions of comments with just the title I as it is. I can guarantee you're going to get some interesting uh, comments on that title. <laughs> yeah, and I figured the Google searches are really going to pop up some interesting things on that title. Yeah, yeah the FBI will visit you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're telling me that I probably need to change things no, no, a little bit. Oh, no, the FBI is great. That's great publicity. Cool. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And I know with your scam brigade and everything, you're probably getting involved with all of that as well. Yeah, there's lots of bad things going on there. But uh, we're going to show the people today uh, in your program how to do things right and with integrity, but big. How about that? I love that. I love that. You know, one of the things that I know everybody really wants to know is they feel so overwhelmed, right? As a, as a new author, you don't really understand how much work it is to keep your books up on the bestseller list, to actually sell the books and keep selling them. This week, I became a 52-week Amazon bestselling author. The book came out 52 weeks ago as a Kindle item, and it's been there every single week since it came out. And people go, how did you do it, Laura? Well, it's a lot of work. And I'd love it if you could talk to everybody on this call about ways that they can create buzz and sales for their book. You know, how do they build their list? How do they build their platform in some of the simplest, easiest ways using the Internet? Well, uh, you know, Laura, uh, before we worry about getting them a bestseller, how about we worry about getting them either out of their garage or off of their computer? How about we start? Oh, I love that. Let's start <laughs> right. there. That's great. Uh, and uh, you use the term overwhelmed. And what what authors have to understand, and see, authors love to write. And uh, that, unfortunately, is the easiest part of the whole deal, the writing. Then the marketing uh, kicks in, and then that's where the overwhelm kicks in because a lot of people like to write and they enjoy you know, the time they spend doing that. But, but unfortunately, that's not enough to, to make the book sell. Uh, and the book selling, by the way, I'll just do a sidebar here. The book is the least profitable, most hassle thing you'll ever do in your life. But it's the calling card 
right. that opens up, uh, as you said in my introduction, the hundreds of other spin-off products that are way, way more profitable. But it all starts with the book. So once you get the book done, the other things actually come easier. But let's go back to the overwhelm issue. When people come to my retreat center, which I happen to be sitting in right now, the only depressing part is behind me. You, I think you might be able to see my spiral staircase. Yes. This is depressing, Laura. I, I wanted my whole life to have a spiral staircase. I finally get one, and I'm too fat to use it. <laughs> no, just sitting... But you've lost weight since I've met you, Tom. <laughs> it was even worse then. I got stuck up there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I had to lose weight to get down. <laughs> All right, so, so uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work to do this. But what uh, the overwhelm factor comes in, uh, the first lesson when somebody comes to my retreat center when they are expecting all this highfalutin internet stuff that i can teach them the first session laura is on automating yourself simple techniques that you can do because people are always pulling their hair out and crying about too many emails and all this stuff so i'm going to give the folks out there some simple tips to automate themselves so that these this incoming onslaught of correspondence that they're going to have doesn't bury them before they even get out of the gate. How about that? I think that's absolutely perfect. Okay. Now, if you happen to use a PC, there's... Me. A, okay. Well, there's a, uh, a website you can go to called shortkeys.com. Shortkeys.com. I okay. have been using this for close to 15 years. This program that cost about $20 has saved me carpal tunnel syndrome easily. What it is, is I was crying. You know, I'm also a big advocate of recruiting young people, you know, geeks that right. help you do stuff. So that's something we'll also talk about. So I'm crying. I'm sitting in the office. This is 1997. It's a long time ago. And I'm crying about the fact that I have to type the same crap over again when people are asking me questions. And so the geek, this little Russian smart aleck kid, but he's brilliant. Uh, right. He's always telling me, just shut up. I'll fix it. You know, so <laughs> and I said, okay, yeah, I'll listen to him. So he comes back in 10 minutes with shortkeys.com. This allows me to take a couple little key combinations, and it'll type in war and peace for me if I wanted to. Wow, so it's like a macro, it's a, what I would call yeah, it in my geek yeah, world. Yeah, for geeks, yeah, we call okay. it macro. I don't know how many geeks are on the line here, but it's a macro program. And so I have been using that for 15 years, and I can't tell you the millions of keystrokes it's, it's, it has saved me. Wow. And it gives me the reputation of being lightning fast when I respond to people. See, one of the things I'm going to talk about today is the importance of your database. I have the largest one in my industry and I can hit a button and money pours in, all right? And that's, okay, so explain database for database the people that are not like geeks. your email list, or if you're a local business, so there's a lot of uh, uh, action around text-based marketing, but for most okay. of us, email is where the money is, and that's our database. So uh, once you build a database of people that love you and, and listen to you, they're gonna start asking questions and making comments. And if you just ignore them, you have just ruined all the potential rapport that's going to make them to want to buy your stuff. Right. So you have to answer them or you have to hire a team of people to answer them. But then it's a little more cold because they can't be you. Right. But in this case, still to this day, after all the stuff I've been through, all the money I make, I can answer emails lightning fast because of something like short keys. All right. Makes sense. Now, I don't think there's an equivalent one for the Mac at this point, but uh, I do have something else for you here that I actually use even more than short keys, and that is called the signature files of your email. So for everybody out there, this, a signature file normally is appended to your email message that has your name and maybe your website and your Twitter and all that stuff. That's a signature file. Okay. Really good email programs have unlimited numbers of signature files that you could stick down there and ah. at once. This is right in front of the nose of people. Now, you can't do it on Gmail because I think they only give you five signatures. But if you use something like Outlook, it has unlimited signature files. 
So my rule of thumb is if I get a question more than once, Laura, I'm right. the answer into a signature file. Oh, okay. Makes sense. And then when I get that same question again, which I know I am, I can go insert signature, pick it, and boom. I just took care of that person instantly. And they can't believe it because somebody, you know, I got, uh, you know, my reputation out in the marketplace. I'm a big, big shot, all right, where I come from. But but the thing is, is nobody ever expects to get an answer from a big shot, right? It's like, right. Well, you don't answer your phone, nothing. Maybe it's 24 hours, 48, some minion will get back to me. No, it's me, boom, answering you really fast and taking care of you. I have had this reputation long before I did internet stuff, 36 years in business. I'm a killer on, st uh, uh, on or a stickler on customer service. So this allows me to take care of people like lightning fast. And so, and again, save carpal tunnel syndrome. Even, Laura, if you had to go and find a, a file and cut and paste it, that ruins your train of thought of whatever you were working on. Right. It takes, takes a while. This is like boom, 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 done. I just took care of that person. And you know, my list is 100,000 people. It's been as high as 150,000. So I get enormous numbers of questions coming in, and I either use short keys or a signature file and take care of those people. This so let me ask a question then. You mentioned Gmail yep. and you mentioned Outlook. Would you recommend that people stop using free email addresses like Gmail and Yahoo and everything as they are becoming authors and going out in the world and building their list and use a domain based email address and then using some sort of mail client like Outlook or something else so that they're not limited by those free email platforms. Well, uh, not only for the, the what I just told you on the automation okay. uh, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty uh, outspoken, let's say, uh, Laura, if you want to look like a schmuck, if you want to look like you're uh, a nobody, go ahead and use a Yahoo. Go ahead and right. use a Hotmail. Gmail is just one step up from that a little bit. And uh, not only do you look bad in the marketplace, uh, that doesn't promote your website. See, every email I send, they know exactly what my website is right. because it's in my email address. So absolutely, uh, the automation is just one part of the whole persona that you have with your email. Just because you have a Yahoo, people are thinking, guess what? You're a Yahoo. You know? and, it's, and Yahoo and Hotmail have really poor reputations for deliverability and it's all right. kinds of negative connotations. So uh, don't skimp on things that are your reputation being shown to the whole world every time you send an email. Right. I, I agree with you. Everything for me goes out either lauraatchison.com or whatwouldawisewomando.com or wisewomenread.com. Yeah, and the newest I, I got is, is uh, sell your baby. Uh, sell your baby. Oh, yeah, that, that oh, domain's taken fast. though. I, I improved <laughs> on your idea. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, sellyourbaby.com was taken. Really scary. <laughs> oh, that's <yeah. laughs> Okay, now back to the overwhelm stuff. Um, uh First of all, nobody on the face of this earth, I don't care if you were a robot, can do everything that needs done in the marketing realm of your book or any right. kind of market. And every day they throw something new at you that you've got to learn. All right. Yes. So so nobody can. I, I have a staff of eight full time people here. All right. We can't do it all. It's just impossible. So there's a couple things you need to do. You need to recruit uh, some young people. And I do a whole section when I, you've seen me speak about recruiting geeks. So this is where you have a young person that's never going to get a date in their entire life. That's the one <laughs> you want. They, and they're, they're thrilled to death to work for you because they're not flipping burgers or cutting grass to make some money. Right. See? They love and where do you find them? What's, oh, where you find them? Well... You go to uh, your local high school. Now, I don't want you to do this in a ritzy neighborhood because these kids have more money than you do, and they're little brats. All right? <laughs> I want you to go to a more of a blue-collar neighborhood, and right. you can't just call up and ask, 
ask for information about kids, all right? You know, I kind of find that found that out the hard way when the police showed up at my house. But, <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. All right. But you can't just call up. All right. So what you do is you uh, call up and find out who's in charge of the computer class. Some high schools have a computer club, even the guidance counselor. They know who the geeks are. And you tell them uh, that you'd like to come down and have a face to face. So they see that you're real. You have a real company. And you tell them you're looking for kids that are looking for evening, weekend, or summer work. So, okay. So that the guidance counselor can contact the parents, explain the whole thing, and help these kids get some real usable uh, work experience, not just flipping burgers. Eh? So that's how you do it. And you, and you just put your feelers out. You might have a nephew, niece, uh, you know, cousin, kid down the street that's a computer nerd. Uh, these are your candidates. And, and I've had great luck. I'll tell you what, I never saw any cooler kids than homeschooled kids because the, the yeah. parents obviously care about education. And, uh, and they, you know, these kids are the sponges for stuff. They're, they're, they're great. So anyway, I've used those, I've used young people my whole career because, you know, I have a cell phone, you know, this smartphone, right? Right. You know why it's called a smartphone? it makes you feel so stupid because you can't figure it out that's why it's a smartphone and so so i'm crying you know i'm known as the king of ka-ching because my email goes ka-ching that's also part of outlook you can make it play a wave sound when right. an order comes in and so i wanted that on my cell phone and i'm thinking it'll take me all day to figure this out and i'm crying about this and some girl in the office picked it up took it away brought it back and it goes ka-ching when it rings do I know how she did it? No. Do I care? No. Does it go ka-ching? Yes, it does. That's what you want. You want to be able to say, oh, I need this done. It's not worth my time to figure it out, but this kid will eat it up and figure it out in no time. Okay? So that's, okay. that really knocks down your overwhelm because when you're sitting there by yourself trying to figure some of this stuff out, it's no wonder people pull their hair out, you know, because it's hard. If you, you didn't, in my age group, didn't grow up with computers. You're, of course, a teenager, so you, 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 <laughs> you know, you can, you can text while you're looking at somebody else, you know. But um, so I, I did start out with punch cards and tape and uh, all of that you're, stuff when I started my don't IT lie career. Oh, so. you, you teenager. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, uh, there's ways to knock down. The overwhelm portion so you can concentrate on the high level stuff you need to be doing uh, and get help because you need help everybody needs help you have to accept that fact because if you just sit there in your little writing room and then wonder how am I going to learn uh, stuff that takes a week to learn just to use Facebook properly for business it's not an hour it's not 15 minutes just because you can throw a Facebook account doesn't mean crap that you know how to operate it for business. And it changes every week just about. I got a full-time girl in there that uh, you know, can barely keep up with Facebook. And she's got to handle Twitter and LinkedIn and stuff and Pinterest and Instagram and you know everything else they're going to come up with tomorrow. So, and it's funny because we just did a whole session on social media and listed all of the different ones. And I got some emails from people between week one and week two calling me an internet goddess that I can handle all the social media, all of this other stuff. And I started laughing uproariously <laughs> because I know even though, you know, I have degrees in computer science and I, I live and breathe tech, I can't do all the social media immediately. I, I, every time I think I have it handled, I go, they changed the rules. Exactly. I don't know where to start. So I start Googling what are the new rules and anybody have tips and I reach out. So that's, I think that's a that's really, like, really good savvy tip. with this stuff. Just think of the author that has not a technical background. That's, that's writing and an expert in their field, but this is, this is way out in another field. Yeah. Um, so, so these are the, the kinds of just some of the things I know we have a lot of other topics to cover, but uh, to knock down the overwhelm. You must get help. You must learn how to outsource also. Some stuff can be sent overseas, but if you don't know what you're doing there either, you're asking for trouble. So so there's all of these things can be learned, 
and they will multiply yourself and help knock down that overwhelm. But if you don't do the things that need done, you're going to be uh, sitting there with a garage full of books or a hard drive full of electrons that aren't going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so true. I can't tell you how many authors I talk to that are like, I, I haven't sold more than five books, and that was all the family. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, really? Your family didn't buy more than five copies? They should have at least bought a case and <laughs> given yeah. them away for Christmas. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, to reduce overwhelm, everybody, what Tom suggests you do is recognize that you don't have to do it all by yourself. Talk to the local high school or homeschool groups, because there are homeschool associations around in all of your communities. And if you can't find that list, you can always reach out to the schools and ask them if they can connect you to the homeschoolers because the homeschoolers all tend to talk to the public school people. Um, also consider starting out with getting away from the public email addresses. Start creating a professional persona for yourself because this is, it is business, right Tom? Right. A lot of, yes, it is easier to write because we love to write. We're authors. Anytime you write an email, you're, you're an author because you're writing something, but there's another side to it. So I think that's really, really good. And I know you're a big proponent of Fiverr as a place to get some help at a very low cost and it's all $5. Mm -hmm. But I know myself, I've tried to use Fiverr and failed miserably every single time. I would love to know a tip. Well, uh, the tip is is that uh, you didn't fail miserably. Remember the old uh, Thomas Edison thing? He just tried 10,000 things to make a light bulb work, right? He didn't fail at right. all. And you're looking at $5, Laura. I mean, uh, let's take a, a logo. Where, where do you live, Laura? You live in, in Florida. somewhere, right? Uh, so go down, uh, where, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, where where you live? Near Vero Beach, Melbourne. Okay, well, which major city is that near? I am... Two hours north of Fort Lauderdale. Okay, so let's say you called up a firm in Fort Lauderdale and says, uh, I want you to develop a logo for me. How much do you think they're going to charge you? Minimum of $1,500, sometimes two, right. $3,000. So when, you know, if you try a $5 one and you don't like it, throw it out. <laughs> Get another one. Get done that. <laughs> throw in the, the next one out. You could throw out a 100 of them and still be $1,000 to the good. <laughs> All right, so... So you got to get a different attitude about it. It's a five dollar okay. thing. Now they do have upsells to ten dollars. Woo! All right, but um, but there is another option besides that if you want to commit uh, a little more money, and that's a, okay. a company called Ninety Nine Designs. Okay. And what this is is this is really a great deal. What you do is you say, okay, I want a logo designed, and I'm willing to pay two hundred fifty dollars for it. All right. So it's way more than Fiverr, right? Yes. So people around the world do a spec job or just do it and hope that they win that $250. Oh, interesting. So you might have – the more you, you are willing to pay, the more people that will bid on it. Okay. And so in addition to you picking one, you just got ideas for like 50 of them maybe, see? Oh, yeah, there you go. And sometimes, I don't know if, how kosher this is, but you can go back to uh, somebody that didn't win the bid and say, hey, uh, you know what, I'll give you $50 for that round of your graphics that you made, too, just so you have more than one. So okay. I'm not sure if that's permissible through their system, but the thing is, is you'll get ideas out the wazoo uh, and still five to ten times cheaper then go on to a professional firm where you get one or two choices at it, and they're going to charge you thousands of dollars. Right? So I think you need Great. a little attitude shift on Fiverr uh, and know that you know that $5 could be you know, feed a family for a week in the Czech Republic where that person was or something. And if, if they're great, great. But see, you may have had poor luck, but I've had so many wonderful stories that people have had good luck. So... The, the best you can do is go to, uh, they have a thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. And pick people that have tons of thumbs up. All right. So look at it as a review process. Yeah, so when like, you get all these bids, mm -hmm. eliminate anybody with the lower numbers. Yeah. Or no, or, no or reviews. Or new people because you don't know. Okay. Uh, 
uh, it's no, there's no big advantage of going with a brand new person thinking it's going to be cheap. It's cheap everywhere. So, right. Got it. So that's uh, that's a way to get a lot of things done. And you can get graphics. You can get people to install WordPress, fix WordPress. I mean, anything you can dream up. There's a lot of funny stuff, too, that you can get on there. I had uh, some guy doing push-ups saying, uh, get a good education. Go to imtcva.org, you know, and uh, <laughs> just, you know, all kinds of funny ads. I had 14 people once, Laura, do a a video promoting one of my products. And you say, how could you, how that's ridiculous. It was a film school students that got together in class and did a job for me for five bucks, but they didn't care about the five bucks. They cared about all 14 of those people getting my publishing company on their resume. Oh, there you go. Okay. So you can get outrageous stuff. Uh, that's for five bucks. That's great that you could never put together yourself. And uh, what else did I get? Oh, I got professional quality voiceover work. You go try to find that for less than fifteen hundred dollars. Never happened. Commercials. Happen. I got thirty and sixty second commercials by twenty five year radio veterans for five bucks. I don't know why they do it. They must be just to get leads into for more work or this. I mean, I guess if they did 10 or 15 30 second commercials in an evening, you know, that's that's a house payment at the end of the month. You know, so uh, so anyway, for us, it's a great bargain. And uh, I'd say uh, forget about the things that didn't work for you. Go go back there when you need. Try again. Try. OK. And it's F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. Fiverr. -R. And there's an old saying about this that I'm thinking, because uh, you tried it, right, and didn't fail. It says, if at first you don't succeed, well, skydiving's probably not for you. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Well, what's really funny is there's a skydive school <laughs> not far from my house, and every day we watch them falling from the sky. Yeah, falling from people falling. Yes. sky is falling, yeah. yeah. This guy is falling. My husband swears I moved here because it was it's raining men, as he said <laughs> there it. There you go. <laughs> So, all right. So, Fiverr is a, a good option. 99, 99 Designs nine, so. is another great yeah. option because a lot of people fast. are self-publishing. Yeah. Then they don't. They need covers. 99 Design sounds like a great well, option for covers. You also have Killer Covers. Uh, is another one for uh, if you're doing uh, Kindle. Kindle is a different animal than your website. On your website, you usually want 3D kind of covers. So. Okay. Putting a bid in on Kindle, make sure they give you all the different versions, 3D and flat for Kindle. Kindle's all flat. Okay. All right, it is. I never really noticed it before until you just said that. Mm -hmm. Since Morgan James did my stuff, everything yeah, was just... I didn't just, have to think about it, but... Yeah, I didn't have to think about it at all, which I kind of like. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Sometimes not having to think, to think about, about it. it. You don't know what to do, then uh, you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, well, we kind of talked a little bit about social media, and this is a big stopping point for a, a lot of people that I talk to, a lot of not only authors, but business people. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to use the word guru around you, but around the social media, you, you seem to target it really well. You seem to understand it really well. Where would you recommend that, someone start if they have no social media i mean and i term social media even blogs and okay. and websites you know social capital if they have none where do you suggest they start and how okay well first of all i want to give you the umbrella picture where the big players or how they're thinking like myself Great. and the people that make a lot of money online so i'm going to lick my finger and say there's only one reason to do social media Okay. It is like a little puppet thing here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Laura. <laughs> I feel like I should do it right back at you. <laughs> I should paint someone. Uh, do a little face. What was the little guy? Yeah, right, from? right. Yeah, I don't know. How, I don't have it written on it. Um, there's only one reason you do it all. It's to get people on an email list. Period. <laughs> Period. Exclamation point. All right. That's the only reason it's it's worth anything because. You hear, you see a lot of scammers trying to sell, oh, make money directly off of Facebook. Yes, you can, but not consistently and not easily, and it depends on the product. It's a lot of variables. But 
and, and people are on Facebook, the all this billion people that's on there aren't us. They're mostly just people playing around, family connections and having fun and looking for free stuff and having a good time. So if you come in there selling stuff, they ostracize you right away, right? So right. You're, even my stuff is designed to give them a freebie to get them off of Facebook into my database. Uh, okay, so you link them out. out. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're in an atmosphere on Facebook and all these other places that's all freebie seekers. That's the mentality. But if you get them out of there, entice them with some freebie, uh, an opt-in form on your website and give away something, excerpt of your book or checklist of something or other, you know, how to sell your baby in three easy steps and, uh, you know, and throw in a bonus of extra diapers or whatever you're going to do to sell your baby. All right. Um, I, yeah, I just thought of a great promotion for my book. There so. you go. Write it down while you're thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so... You've got to get them out of there because the email environment, people are more like, more used to getting sold to and more responsive. And all the big players that you can name, anybody, that's not a celebrity in their own right, because a lot of celebrities, they don't make their money off of and desperately need to sell stuff off their email list. They are already rich and famous, and they have an email list, but they don't have to do things right like we have to do. So, Got so it. you can't always emulate celebrities because they, they have other ways to get people than we do. So the whole reason, so that's my big, and I'm hammering on this, because so many people are just up there playing around. They're just wasting time and money uh, up there. So you learn, you put your personal page up. Let's say, let's take Facebook, because that's got a billion people there, and put your personal page up. But then you immediately have to go over and get your business page or pages. You can have multiple ones. And uh, and like I said, the rules change every day. So what I say today, by the time they see this, might, uh, you know, who knows? Facebook might have been sold to God or somebody. Uh, all, right. <laughs> all right. So, but anyway, for right now, there's certain rules and parameters that you can get people off of your fan page into an opt-in form to get them into your email list. Okay. So all of this, that's the reason. Now, LinkedIn is a little bit different because it's more business people, you know, promoting each other and stuff. But I want to get that person off of there onto my list so that they get to know me deep. They're listening okay. regularly uh, and get them out of there, and then they're going to buy some of my stuff eventually. Okay? So all of them, Twitter... Is the, is one of the easiest ones to start, unless you're long winded. Then that's probably a good idea for that one. It can be hard to do it in that many characters. Type in your tweet, and it's like minus ten thousand characters. You know, oh, gee, I guess I went too much on that. Um, but the, the, that the whole thing of that is is to get them on an email list. See. Uh, so that's my thing on social media. The, I, don't, I don't really get into the nitty-gritty of it because it changes so fast. i got a full-time right. person that does it for me. It's impossible to keep up with that stuff because what you do today, uh, and you're all proud of yourself for taking all day Sunday to figure it out, next week could change. And so that's why it's good to have somebody else watching that stuff and, then cha and alerting you of the changes because – uh, this is what happens. I know you wanted to talk about search engine optimization a little bit today. And, right. And that changes, uh, uh, simple changes can just ruin you. You just disappear off the face of the earth overnight. But if you're not keeping up with it, that's what's going to happen. So, so uh, again, back to the, the you got to get help to keep up with this stuff and, and the knowledge. And then the, my big thing is to get low-priced labor to implement it. See, all of these services, you can buy firms that will sell you the stuff, but they see you coming, and you have no idea what's going on. And so, literally, I run into people every week that are spending from 10 to 100 times, and I'm not being facetious or hypey here, 10 to 100 times what something should cost because they're sitting ducks because they don't know any better, and they didn't take the right. time to learn this stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, I when I had my IT services company, we would job out website development and design for people, and I would laugh. I'd see some quotes come back, $25,000 <laughs> yeah. for a business website, and I'm like, seriously, people? <laughs> this is maybe $2,000. Yeah. And that includes developing all of the graphics because this is not a site that's selling products and has shopping carts. This is an informational site. It's maybe seven pages. Yeah, I mean, I mean that should be $25,000? 50 bucks or less in my system. And, yeah. and maybe a couple days worth of training for you to see how to do it. You know, So if you want to blow 25000 you don't deserve to have a bestseller. You're, you know, you should. I don't want to be politically incorrect here. On your, I wouldn't expect anything other than but, that uh, from you, Tom. Yeah, so. just, you, you should just. You shouldn't be allowed out of the house if you spend twenty five thousand on something that should cost fifty bucks. So, uh, so you got to be careful. And there's a, you know, you're. I always tell people like if you're an expert in, um, let's say you're a, a doctor. Well, if I went up and started talking medical stuff to a doctor, how long is it going to take that doctor to know I'm an idiot? Instantly, right? So what do you think when you go up to a web designer and you're clueless, in two seconds they know you're clueless, and so they can tell you and sell you anything they want and you don't know any better. And everybody, including me and you, Laura, are telling them, you got to have a website, you got to have this. So they say, oh... I guess I got to have it. And so they mortgage their house and they throw a bunch of money at stuff that that's totally worthless. So, so you got to be careful. And, but the more knowledge you get, the better things will be for you because you'll keep your expenses down. You can either have your expenses lower and have a decent web presence, or you can spend the same amount of money, but get an enormous web presence out of it instead right. of a little teensy weensy things that you don't even know how to operate. So can we give everybody that's listening to this a couple of things? Say they want to try to do it themselves to get something up, something quick that they can start blogging from. Mm -hmm. What's a resource that they could go to? WordPress.org, um, oh, HostGator? Okay, some... so the, this, I don't know how much they know about WordPress, but WordPress is kind of the standard. And... And you'll get, uh, see, what happens is, Lori, you get the geeks arguing about stuff. And it totally confuses a user. You know, I used right. to back way back in 1997 when they first came out with Microsoft Front Page, which allowed I remember. a person to make a web page. You had all the geeks telling me, oh, the code isn't pure. And all this stuff, like, what do you mean? I t you know. And, and they couldn't tell me, but it's like it, they're looking up their nose at me because I'm using Microsoft front page. And money is knocking my front door down, and I'm getting buried because I'm making so much money online because I'm able to put lots of web pages up for free instantly. So right. I don't give a darn if the code is not pure. Right. And I right. It. It's the outcome. I, yeah, I guarantee the those result. geeks would trade bank accounts with me. See? So, uh, so the thing is, is when we come to WordPress, there's other things similar to WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, or two that come to mind. Okay. And whether one is better or not, do you remember, Laura? I know again, you're not old enough to remember this, but some of your your viewers might be. Um, the the VHS beta debate. I remember. The old days. Well, most people that in the know would say beta, beta was a higher quality tape. Yeah, it was. But guess what? VHS won the marketing war. Yeah. So who cares if beta is good if there's no movies on it, no place to play it? See? Yeah. So WordPress won the marketing war here. Uh, I don't know technically if it's better than Drupal or Joomla, but it doesn't matter because... 10,000 plugins a day, uh, which are a way to make your WordPress site do something extra, are being developed. Uh, I, don't, I made that number up, but I mean, it seems like it. Everybody's coming out, they're developing for WordPress, the whole world's WordPress. So, folks, use WordPress. It just only makes sense. And it's a free account. You can get well, a site. Yeah, but be right? careful uh, when we, we tell people that it's free because some people think that if I go to WordPress.com, 
and start a blog, which you can do anytime you want, that that's what we're talking about. No, we are not talking right. about that because WordPress.com does not allow commercial activities. So as soon as you try to sell your book off there, they're going to kick you off. You're banned. See? So what we're talking about is to get regular hosting. You named one HostGator, Bluehost, Vario. There's lots of good hosting services. And you install the WordPress software on a regular hosting service right. under a domain name that you have purchased. LauraAtchinson.com. Sell a baby, get away with it.com. Uh, you know, all these, you know, uh, things are your domain name and then WordPress software is installed but that's just the beginning the the soft the WordPress is like the engine of a car the theme that you pick to make your site look is like the paint job on a car right. so just installing WordPress and you sit there and there's this same theme that nine million other people have that they just give you is not what we're talking about. You want to go and look at either a paid or a free theme. We're partial to paid themes because a lot of free themes don't work well. And by the time yeah. you find out that it doesn't, you've done all this work. So, so we like paid themes, but we're only talking, I mean, anywhere from fifty to eighty or eighty or ninety dollars for most themes. Right. And they're going to work beautifully, and you can customize them. You can get somebody off of Fiverr to do the graphics, uh, extra graphics for your header and things like that. So you're looking at, uh, we have world-class sites that we have less than $100 in. Great. And the nice, the important thing about this, Laura, is in the way I've built my whole, you know, quote, empire, is that if I had to pay several thousand bucks for every website I have, I'd be too, it'd be too risky to try certain ideas. Yeah, I would. Yeah. So, wouldn't be, and it wouldn't be cost effective. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it may, but uh, it may lose my shirt, too, at the same time. So I have a site called IamNotAPoodle.com. Right? So, <laughs> Is that about your pups? Well, yeah. We have these Bichon Frise dogs. They're little white yeah. dogs. And, I love and them. And everybody says, oh, what a cute poodle you have. Well, it's not a poodle. It's a Bichon. And the Bichon's getting a complex over this, being called a poodle all the time. And the doggy psychiatrist, the Bill... Is terrible. Sorry. So, so <laughs> we came up with a site. I am not a poodle, and so we give a percentage of the profits to Bichon Rescue, and I've given them twenty five thousand dollars so far. Yeah, you know? that's so, great. But the thing is, you know how much the website costs? Fifteen dollars. It wasn't WordPress because WordPress wasn't in vogue when I did that. But uh, you could do it for free, basically. Right now, is create a site like that. Fatso Tennis. That's my other site. <laughs> One of my other sites where I have the dubious distinction of being the largest person ever to star and produce a tennis training video. <laughs> right. It's been around for a long time now. Uh, but it was twenty dollars for this gorgeous template. And I went out, Laura, just for fun on the open market and got bids. And it's been out, I don't know, five years or so. I got bids on how much it would cost to replicate it. And it was from seventeen hundred to thirty six hundred dollars. They wanted to put a couple tennis balls in and, and make the site where I paid twenty dollars for it. That's great. Okay, so that's how we start now. So I mean you talked about Fatso Tennis and, and the poodle and how much money you've gotten with I am not a poodle. It kind of leads to a question I have for you. You know, I call that evergreen revenue. The sites are up, they're just generating revenue for authors. You know, the book is not your primary revenue source you, unless you're a J.K. Rowling or a James Patterson or somebody that every time your book comes out, you sell millions and millions of copies, right? As a first-time or even second-time author, you're really using, as you said earlier, your book as the launching platform for the other things that you do. Can you make a suggestion or talk about perhaps three sources of revenue that authors, first-time authors, can be thinking about, whether it's audio or video or something okay. that they can get up there for some evergreen sources. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to take it even a step further than that, Laura, uh, because evergreen uh, is, a, is a term that means that the, the topic is good for a long time. Internet stuff right. is not considered evergreen. 
you know, but my public speaking stuff that I sell is more evergreen because the okay. techniques of speaking don't change as much as the internet stuff changes. But I wanna, constantly, yeah, I want to take it a step and make uh, instead of the word evergreen, I'm going to throw in the word residual. Okay, residual is very Even good. Better. Good number, okay. good word. Because uh, if you've got an evergreen product, you still have to promote it and sell it and promote it and sell it and ship it. Or if it's an ebook, that's better, but you still have to promote it and all that. Um, but residual means that you work once and get paid, 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 paid. That's what I like. All right. So one way to do that of your three is called a membership site. Now, it does take a little work because you do have to keep adding stuff to your membership site or people will get sick of it and leave. But pretty much, I, I wrote an article, Laura, one time, when does 20 equal 24,000, all right? So let's think about this. Let's say you had only 100 members out of the entire billions of people on the internet, you could get 100 members, which is about as low as the bar as you can find. Okay. At $20 a month. So 20 times 100 is $2,000 a month. Times 12 is $24,000 cash flow you just made by having the lowest, worst performance you could ever think of on the Internet. That's kind of nice. Double that even. There's $48,000 in revenue, which is a salary for a lot of people. And you're sitting there, you know, watching you know, Seinfeld reruns every, and the money keeps coming in because the members, every month, their credit card gets dinged automatically. Now, they're not going to stick with you very long if you never add more stuff to the site. So it's not truly residual, but pretty darn good. So the next thing I want to tell you about is, is what allows me to legitimately say, and this is going to sound hocus pocus, but I'm going to explain how this works. I couldn't stop the money coming into my checking account if I tried. Could, couldn't stop it. I'd have to like go hide out in Mexico and close the accounts. Redirect some my yeah, way. Yeah, that would be kind of you to help me with that. <laughs> I'd be more you're, than happy to. Talk. I know you're a giver. Um, but let me tell you, explain how this works. The first concept I have to explain is an affiliate program. So let's say you write a book and you're talking about uh, subject uh, baseball, let's say. And then you, you say, well, uh, I really like this certain type of baseball glove. And if you click here, you can buy this glove that I'm recommending. Well, that link might be an affiliate link. And so if the person clicks on it and goes over and buys the baseball glove, the author gets a commission on the sale. That's a basic affiliate thing where you recommend something and it's through a special link, they buy it and you get a commission. That's a basic affiliate thing that everybody needs to know about. The I do that with my book. If you click off my website to the Amazon link or the Barnes & Noble link, I get a piece from Amazon in addition to my royalties. There you go. So you're doing your, your own affiliate, basically. I listen to you. Yeah, there you go. So you're your own affiliate, but you also could recommend somebody else's book and right. get an affiliate commission for that. That's basic affiliate stuff. So let's take it one step further. Let's say, Laura, that you came up with um, a CD of the month club. Laura's CD of the month club. And I, and I uh, say, oh, that's a great CD of the month club. Everything Laura says is, is golden. I, you know, I, I'm going to tell Joe over here about your CD of the month club. So I say, Joe, you've got to sign up for Laura's CD of the month club. It's awesome. So Joe clicks on my link and goes and buys your CD, right, Laura? Right. Okay, let's say it's $30 he pays you. So you ship the CD to Joe, and you give me a $10 commission. Okay. okay? Now, what hap that's the first month. Now, what happens the second month? Joe pays you automatically through your shopping cart for your next CD, because it's CD of the month, right? Oh, right, right. And you ship the CD to Joe, right? And you give me a $10 commission for recommending Joe. That's the right. second month. Third month, what happens? You ship the CD. He pays automatically. You ship it. You give me a $10 commission. 
All right, so it goes on and on. Right. How, how many times, Laura, did I promote this to Joe? Once. How many times do I get paid? Every single time. Every time, he, as long as he sticks in the, the program. So I could drop dead, and you're still sending me $10 a month for every time Joe pays it. Now, I won't enjoy the money as much. I probably not, you know, but uh, you will still send it. Right. It, right as I sit here, thirty to $40,000 a month comes in. If I would just quit everything, fire everybody, and sit here and watch tennis all day long. All right. Because of all the all the things affiliate kind of work to people Got it. that are ongoing, so they keep paying and I keep getting a commission. These are called residual affiliate programs. So this is uh, something that authors need to to really look for is along their lines of what they talk about. What could they recommend to somebody? that would be ongoing so that they keep getting paid over and over and over again. That's okay. residual affiliate program. All right, so that's second method. First method right. was membership sites. Second was residual affiliate program. Th Great. Third method is what we call an advertising model. Now you have to have quite a bit of traffic to make this happen. But I've got a tip for, for you on how to get a lot of traffic. And that is called user-generated content. Okay. Now, everybody out there, yell it out. <laughs> user-generated content. Yeah, but I yell out some of the top sites that are user-generated content. Huffington Post. Okay, not not as much as I, I was thinking, but what else? Okay. Um... They're right in front of you. They're smacking you in the face every day. Really? Um, Amazon? No. No? Because they seem to pop up with YouTube. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, I, I don't live and breathe in YouTube all the time, but yeah. Okay. Twitter. YouTube. Twitter is people putting stuff in. Facebook, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of they're that. They're all. Yeah, all the social media. Yeah, see? So, Pinterest. Yeah. So uh, there's there's a one that everybody can look up later. It's, I always show it at speeches. It's called Cats in Sinks. Oh, I love that one yeah. when you show it. People are uploading pictures of their cats in sinks. And the site keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger every time somebody uploads a picture. Well, next to the picture is an advertisement put it by Google called the Google AdSense program. So you put a little piece of code on your site, and every page it's on, if somebody clicks on the ad, you get paid by Google. So, ah. so that's an advertising model. If you get your site big enough, people will pay you directly to put ads on, or there's advertising networks that will sell the ads for you, put them on your site, and you split the money. So okay. it's totally hands-off if you have traffic. And if you create something that people upload stuff to all the time, there's one called Kiss This Guy. It's song lyrics that people thought they heard when they really didn't. And it's funny as heck, all right? But it's just enormous sites, been up for 10, 12 years, and it's got ads that people click on or just see. It, sometimes people just have to see your ad. That's called an impression. Okay. And so you get paid for that too. So, so there's three models that you can bring in residual income. How do they find those banks or places to start getting that income coming in with the ads? Well, there's an, uh, uh, you'd look for advertising networks. That would be a Google okay. search. But there's, okay. a, there's a network that's very popular called OpenX. It's not anything to do with adult stuff. It just happens okay. to be called OpenX. You sign up as a publisher. Now you're a publisher. You're not an advertiser, you're a publisher. And you tell them how much traffic you are. Tell them the sites that you don't want on there. You know, you don't want, if you had a children's site, you don't want adult-oriented ads or liquor ads or I don't know what, what things that wouldn't be appropriate. And then they have the buyers already looking for places to display the ads. And so they give you a little piece of code that you put on your website, and the ads just start appearing. And uh, you get half of the money, whatever's generated from the ad. 
So, okay. and then Google AdSense is just part of Google. You just sign up for their AdSense program, and uh, um, and then they give you a code again, and then they display ads, and you people click on them, you get paid. But you have no control over what those ads are going to be. You have right? a little control because if you uh, Google reads your page to see what it's okay. about, because there's no sense putting baby food ads on an adult, you know, site. Okay. You know, that's you won't get the clicks properly. So. They try to send ads that are related to what your page is. So if you're good at manipulating the keywords, you can manipulate what types of ads show up. And you, you have a some. resource you mentioned for looking at keywords yeah. because I know that's something I'm not really strong with. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about There's that? It's a keyword research tool called uh, freekeywords.wordtracker.com. Freekeywords.wordtracker.com. Now, be okay. careful when you go here because I want you to sign up for a free account, not a free trial. The free <laughs> trial is you put your credit card in, and seven days later, they want to sell you the four or $500 paid version. You don't need okay. that. If you've never even used the free version, you certainly don't need the paid version. So get a free account, and then you can play with it. You put a seed word in. Like I put in public speaking, a word or phrase, and hit search. Okay. <clears throat> It'll tell me all the ways people are typing in public speaking, like public speaking tips, public speaking fear, fear of public speaking, public speaking anxiety. It tells me all the ways people are typing them and how many times they're typing it. Okay. So it's a great tool. It's much more accurate than anything Google puts out. So uh, now if you're in the U.S., it's going to give you only U.S. It's not the whole world. If you happen okay. to be in the U.K., it would give you U.K. results. Now, once you get this list and you start working with it, and you're saying if hundreds and hundreds of people or thousands of thousands of people are searching on that keyword, is that one of the words that you want to use on your site, or do you want to pick lower well, there's, there's a, this is a complicated topic that could take a couple of these, you know. Yeah, just to, like <clears throat> yeah. So, layer one. So first of all, uh, you want to take your main source of expertise and the main source of revenue. If, if I'm a public speaking uh, and I make all my money teaching public speaking, my big money, I'm going to get all public speaking related keywords to feed my main source of income. All right. Got it. Now, once you get those covered, your main sources of income, you know, I've been doing this 18 years. So I do the doggy stuff and I do golf stuff. And that's the thing where I hate golf. You know, I got golf websites that are number one on the search engines and I hate golf. I wouldn't go golfing if the Swedish bikini team was holding my laptop out. <laughs> I mean, Which says a lot coming that's from a you. Lot. Yeah. So, so, uh, but people are crazy about golf, so why not? I have a golf site, and it's an advertising model. I don't want to talk golf. I don't know anything about golf. I just want people to click on ads so that I get paid for golf. All right. So okay. That's the this example of things I don't even like that I can make money on. As long as it's ethical and moral, what's the difference? Once you learn okay. what I know, why not turn it into lots of revenue streams that re reduces the risk in your life because if one thing falls down you've got plenty of other ones going and when you only spent fifteen twenty dollars on a website you can have a whole bunch of them and give yourself a family a nice insurance policy unless the internet blows up you've got a lot of nice revenue streams coming in and a lot of little ones are as good as one big one because one big one is especially risky uh, right. if it goes down you're out of business if you have lots of things going on you're good so, uh, yes, I would use the keywords on my main expertise first and then branch out to others. Okay. And what do you think of video on websites? Well, video uh, is another thing that people make some grievous errors not thinking or because they've never been taught or because it's easy. And, see, we love YouTube to drive traffic to your website. But frequently okay. you see people populating their whole site with YouTube videos of themselves uh, or of other things. So I don't mind putting a funny Bichon thing, you know, uh, YouTube video. But the problem is, is when you put a, a YouTube embed code on your site, 
it's too easy for people to click back to YouTube and forget all about you. Okay. So the, the best practice is, is to use YouTube videos on YouTube to drive traffic to your site. Once they get on your site, you should have a video player and then host your videos on a, on a nice cheap hosting like Amazon S3 is a okay. really powerful by Amazon cheap hosting for videos and big files. Pennies. I mean, it's just really cheap. And then you hook it to a player on your site. See, if you load these big videos on your cheap hosting service, you're just going to bog down the whole thing and it's going to be like molasses. But host it on Amazon, display it on your site, and now people can't click back to, to uh, YouTube real easily. That's the best practice. But videos are great. People love them. But you got to, uh, you know, you got to quit being long-winded. People aren't even making it two minutes on a video nowadays. Uh, okay. If it's a training video teaching you how to uh, shoot a bow and arrow, okay, yeah, go a little bit longer. But if it's for traffic driving, you want, I have a formula for this. You want me to give it to them? I would love it. Okay. So here's your form. Give me a, pick a topic, a random topic, anything on earth you can think of, Laura, and I'll shoot you a video right now. Okay. Um, let's my 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 book. What would a wise woman do? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, now the uh, the the first question I have to ask before I do this for you is what would a keyword be for that? A wise woman. And that, that's where I struggle. Okay. So uh, how about an empowered woman? Empower. Okay. Empowered is a big word in the in the women's. Uh, I don't know if there's a movement going on, but you a lot of people are into empowering women. All right. So let's say empowering women is your keyword. Okay. So, uh, hi, it's Laura Atchison, and I know you're here looking for information on empowering women. Well, you've come to the right place because even though I only look like I'm 12 years old, I've been in this field for somewhere about 220 years, and I've been working with women and helping women reach the highest levels in their professional and, and personal lives. So let me give you a tip on how you can empower women. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know a damn thing about it. Right. Okay. No, that's great. <laughs> give a, a tip. For more great tips like this, visit my website. Uh, what is it? Uh, what would a wise woman do com, where you'll get a very specific tip sheet, downloadable something, audio file, and I'll see you over there. Boom. That's perfect. That's a great Let's example. Let's break it for... down. Do we have time to break it down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, okay. All right. Introduce yourself. Your name. Now, one mistake I made from old school is we now actually say your website at the beginning of the video because people aren't making it all the way to the end. So okay. I would change the beginning to, hi, I'm Laura Atchison from, what is it again? Uh, what would a wise what woman would a wise do? Woman do com. So mention your, your, your website at the beginning. Second thing is you mention the key, you actually say the keyword in the video. For a couple years now, Google has been able to index the words that you say in your video. A lot of people didn't, haven't known this. Uh, so say the words, the, the keywords in the video. Okay. Next thing, give a little bit of credibility, not your whole CV. I, uh, I've been working in this field for so long and helped lots of women do something or other. A little Got bit it. of credibility. Next thing is, I've got a great tip for you. Give them a really good tip. One tip. One tip. Then, for more great tips like this, visit my site. Call to action. Get them to go somewhere and do what. This is the whole reason you're doing the thing is to get them to go. And what do we want to get them on when we get them there? Laura, on our list. On our list. The email, right? Yes. So go there where you will get and give them something specific. Don't just say. Oh, I got lots of great tips over there. Visit me. No. Specific sells and moves people to action. General doesn't. So you give them something specific they're going to get when they go to your website. Okay. And then you just close it any way you want. I'll see you over there. There's your formula. That's perfect. And uh, you can, once you do four or five of them, all you're varying is the keyword and the tip. See? And so the rest of it, your your name and your website, all that stuff's the same. So you could sit down and knock out 50 or 100 of these in a month on all different keywords and have traffic coming in like crazy as long as you put them up on YouTube correctly, which is 
again, use of keywords properly. Um, I did 300 of them in one month, 10 a day for 30 days. And wow. it's brought in, I don't know, close to a million views just on those those things. And it's on public speaking, which most people hate. So a million isn't yeah. big anymore, but for public speaking, that's pretty good. Okay, so, And then they opt in. And they opt in. Which gets them I into your, them later. your queue for everything else that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Which you're you're brilliant at. Although I'm on like three or four different lists for you, yeah. so sometimes I get an email three or four times in a row. Yeah, if you unsubscribe for one, I'll hit you on the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. And you know, I love all the stuff I get from you, so it's great. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, I could talk to you for hours, and um, you know, my radio show is going to be starting. I'm hoping within the next month, Entrepreneur Masterclass. So hopefully, you'll. Uh, do me the pleasure of joining me, and we can talk about the entrepreneurial things that people can be doing, which is really what we were talking radio, about today. Right? But we can, yes, so it's going to be on radio. Have a good hair day for it. Neither do I. No oh, makeup. Awesome. I don't have to put any makeup on either. It's very cool. I like it. <laughs> and we don't have to sit there like you did with me. And thank you, by the way, for those who are listening. Um, Tom's like, okay, Laura, you need to move the camera a little bit because the window glare is really kicking off. So do this, and then here's a tip. Tip the top of your glasses so you don't have glare. Anybody that wears temple, glasses, the, temple. the temples. So this part of your glasses, you want to tip them up higher on the, on your temples so that you get less glare on your eyes. And, so and thank look you for that. the camera. Don't look at the person you're talking to because it'll, right. if you look at them on the screen, you're not looking into the camera, so it doesn't look like you're looking at them. So right. into the camera, and, and it's very uncomfortable in the beginning because you you want to look at their picture. But then that'll make you look squirrely on the other end. Right. And we're recording this through software called Pamela, which works slightly differently. So I've spent a little more time sort of looking at Tom so that it looks okay on the Pamela recording. But that's a really good point. Look at where the webcam is or where the camera is. And um, I've told several people that will be listening to this that one day you're going to send me a life-size cutout of you to put behind my video camera so when I film myself at home, I have somebody to look at and engage with. Well, that sounds like Donald Trump. Did you hear about him? <laughs> you mentioned that. Because he, 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 people was charging these people 30 some thousand dollars to meet him, and he had a cardboard cutout of <laughs> Yeah, but now he's in a whole big lawsuit. Yeah, over forty million that dollar lawsuit over yeah. Trump. Yeah, that's crazy. So, thank you so much for your time, Tom. I mean, I, I'm so grateful. And everybody, we're gonna have links to where you can get more information about Tom. But it's greatinternetmarketingtraining.com is one of his main sites. He has several other ones, but there will be a place you can click if you want to find out more about all the great, wonderful things that Tom does. And thank you for your time. I am so, so grateful and lots of great information. Well, I love you. Love you, Laura. Thank All you. Right.